Live from the board game room, it's the Insane Board Game Freak Show with your host, me, the Insane Board Game Freak. You come on, go already, buddy. Oh man, there goes the board game community. In this episode, Classic Games 100 Games bring game night to a whole new level with this Classic Games Super Pack. Five double-sided playing boards includes all your favorite games and many more to discover, such as chess checkers, racing game, four in a row, snakes and ladders, nine men's Morris, Ludo, uh, aka Parcheesy, Tic Tac Toe, Solitaire, Game of Goose, and Crocinoli, or whatever, Crocinole. So my uh, pronunciation is bad. Um, anyway, a hundred games. I don't know if I could do all these games in a um, hundred games in this episode in less than twenty-five minutes or so. But anyway, um, uh, doesn't look like there's a hundred games. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? At to the board game room. I really doubt there's a hundred games in here. Who are they trying to kid? Alright, here we go. It's a hundred games. Classic games. A hundred games, which I doubt. You get snakes and ladders. I told you what you got in the beginning. Game of the Goose. Look, look. <laughs> uh, you get the Morris game. You get this game. I never even heard of these games. This racing game is cool. Uh, this game. Which looks like somebody just took a piece of um, tile from um, somebody's kitchen floor or something. And this game, Crokinole, or whatever it is. I know, I know what game it is, but um, I, I don't know, I forgot how to pronounce it. And then there's this game, there's Checkers and Chess, Parcheesi. That game again, and that game again. You get these player marker tokens uh, for chess, checkers, and all the uh, good stuff. And you get these matches for um, these dice. Not matches for dice, matches for one of the other games. Um, write down nicely in the comments down below if you want. Um... Now let's see, game of the goose game, of oh, the goose game, of oh, the goose game, of oh, the goose game, game of the goose game, you're going to have, alright, I did a review about snakes and ladders, it's basically, it's shoots and ladders actually, but I'm not going to do that. So, Game of the Goose. Okay. Game of the Goose. So, the Game of the Goose game is um, a board game where, like, two or more players move pieces around the track. Okay. And, um... Uh... By rolling a dice or two dice. The aim of the game is to reach square number 63 before any of the other players do while avoiding obstacles such as the inn, the bridge, and death. The game is thought to have originated in the 16th century. And the game is mostly played in Europe or wherever. That's basically it. You're going around the board and then... I don't know, these are here for designs, whatever. You only gotta do like that. You died, start over. Well, 
lose two turns. It says the well, you oh, well, well, you fell down the well, <laughs> little rascals. Yeah, Maze go back to thirty. You know, that's basically it. It's a it's a race game where you're racing around the track, trying to make it to finish. You know what shoots and ladders is? That's what snakes and ladders is. All right. So now, um, this game here. This game here is four in a row, so I'm guessing it's like tic-tac-toe. You're playing tic-tac-toe. It's Connect Four, but on a game. So if you know how to play Connect Four, you're going to have your player tokens go, you have to make a line, Connect Four, and your opponents are going to try to block you. That's what that is. Then you get tic-tac-toe. Well, this game is Nine Men's Morris. So, Nine Men's Morris is a strategy game in which um, two players um, are playing the game and Nine Morris, uh, the game has also been called cowboy checkers and is sometimes printed in the back of checkers anyway it's solved game that is a game whose optimal strategy has been calculated uh it's been shown that with perfect play from the, both players the, the game results in a drawer um a game of neumann's morris is phase two um even if it's um the um other person's turn, um, the other person playing against the other person can remove a piece of theirs each time a mill is formed by moving um, E3, ED, so 9 mills more, is, I think I have this game, I, I, I have another one called, it's called um, Mill, the, the Mill, or something like that. But anyway, um, Nyman's Morris, you could probably look it up and find instructions. I'm not that great with explaining how to play this game, sorry. But um, the board consists of this grid, and you get 24 intersections of points. Each player has nine pieces or men, usually colored, um, you know, um, a two-tone. Uh, players try to form mills, three of their own men, line horizontally or vertically, allowing a player to remove an opponent's man from the game. A player wins by reducing the opponent to two pieces where they can no longer form mills and thus be unable to win. Okay, or by leaving them with that illegal move. So, you know, placing men on vacant points, moving men to adjacent points... Um, an optional phase would be moving men to any vacant point when the player has been reduced to three men. The game begins with an empty board. The players determine who plays first and take turns. Placing their men back and forth, whatever. If a player is able to place three of their pieces, contiguous points in a straight line, vertically or horizontally, they form the mill and may remove one of their opponent's pieces from the board and the game. With the convenience that a piece is in opponent's mill can be removed if no other pieces are available. After all men have been placed, phase two begins. And in phase two, um, players continue to alternate moves this turn, moving a man to an adjacent point. A piece may not jump another piece. Players continue to try to form mills and remove their opponents as in phase one. A player can break a mill by moving one of the pieces out of the existing mill, then moving it back to form the same mill at a second time or any other number of times. Each time removing one of this opponent's the act of removing an opponent's men man is sometimes called pounding the opponent. 
when one player has been reduced to three men, phase three begins. And when a player is reduced to phase three, it's called flying. When a player is reduced to three pieces, there is no longer a limitation of that player of moving to only adjacent points. The player's men may fly or hop or jump from any point to any vacant uh, point. Sorry if I don't have the pieces out and I'm not showing you how to go around or anything. Yeah, I know it's quite lame, but I'm sorry about that. I just don't feel like going over 10 or 100 games right now. So verbally, you can listen to this like you listen to an old radio show and jot down some information about what I'm saying in order to play the games correctly if you ever get these games. They also come with instructions too, so. Um, some rules... Sources say that this game is played like that, or some treat it as if it's a variation and don't mention it at all. And that's basically it. Um, when the weaker side is one man away from losing the game, that's basically it. Now there's variance, there's strategy. That's that with that. Now I'm going to go on with um, the racing game. Well, here's part cheesy. Part cheesy, you just got to get all your players around the board. You start here, and then you just go around. You know, you got to hop out and go around the board like so. And there's other rules with that. This is a really lazy episode, sorry. Um, solitaire. Okay. And Crokinole. Solitaire board game. Whatever. I'm probably boring you. You probably have, are like half asleep right now. I know I'm about to fall asleep. Had a long day at work today. Um, Crokinole. Um, Shut up and sit down. Does a really good episode of Crokinole. Me mates over in England, the UK. Really cool guys. Check out their episode about Crokinole. It's a big wooden board game. And it's like playing shuffleboard. And, um... It's a dexterity game. That's kind of like shuffleboard. And then, um... That's basically it. Solitaire, I can't really find the rules and regulations to play that game as a board game. Let's go up top. Alright, so, my final thoughts about these games. These games are cool, they're fun to play, they're the basic games that you've always played since I was a, you were, I was a kid, you were the kid, whoever was a kid, since the beginning of time okay um these got really old old style old school games the first board games of all time um sorry if i really didn't do much greater of an episode with these i'm kind of tired and doesn't mean i should be lazy and do a bad episode of these games um these games should get really good credit because they are the originators of board games and um i greatly appreciate these games even though if i didn't show that much with the um review I just did, so, I guess I'm ashamed in a way, but I shouldn't be, because, you know, I, I'd be running out of time anyway, but, there, you, you can probably look it up online and find out how to play these cool games, uh, checkers and chess, that's, that's easy to know, crocodile is kind of easy to know, uh, tic-tac-toe is easy to know, this is solitaire, you know, shoots and ladders is like snakes and ladders. Men in the Mill, Nine Men's Mill, whatever. That's pretty cool. I like that game. Uh, this is Connect Four, basically, pretty much. And then uh, Goose is Game of the Goose is cool. But, you know, that's basically it. Um, you can get this for five bucks at a store. And um, I got it for like a dollar or two at a thrift shop. 
Um, it didn't come with instructions though to the game, so but offhand, you know, off the top of my head, I kind of just like remembered, you know, what they were and how to play them a little bit because um, they look familiar. So, but the playing pieces are pretty cool. They're decent. They're good, you know. And uh, that's basically it. You know, that's classic games. A hundred games. That's it for today, boy. Looks like this game is over, or these games are over. Board game freak out.